This ever happen to you? You turn the corner filled with triumph and standing tall. Directly in front of you is the target. You tactically throw off all those trash and terrible traducers on the enemy team, and the territory will soon be yours. Terrible news to tell you the truth though, there's a turret there! And behind it, a turtling and tactless tool user. You type in the chat, TURTLE, with a plus sign for the T's and a free for the E. But why? For those who watched the Why Snipers Hated video, I made a comment saying how Sniper is the one class in the game that can unnecessarily stall and drag out a match. It's still a somewhat true statement, but I said it because I had the perspective of being a Sniper player. That's why, if we're going to be talking about Engineer, I'm going to need some help from my uncle. What do you mean he isn't here? He's so upset I called Dust Bowl a bad map? No matter. Show must go on. Engineer in Valve's eyes was supported and designed around his sentry gun. The sentry gun is an extremely powerful tool, and Valve had a difficult time trying to balance it out. Make it too broken and only skilled players could beat it. Too weak and what's the point of playing Engineer anyways? The solution was simple. Make the sentry gun stupid. It fires at people in range, but as soon as it loses track of them, or if they dart into cover, it forgets about them, thus requiring the actual engineer player to use his old noggin to weed out the frets around the corner with either a shotgun or a pistol. It also meant that the engineer needed to be dealt with quickly before he could properly set up his gun and lock down the area. As for dispensers and teleporters, both were not only intended to help engineers support his team outside of being defensive, but also to quote unquote distract him away from his sentry. With the game the game getting more and more updates however, and with the engineer getting some quite hefty buffs like being able to pick up his buildings and upgrading dispensers and teleporters to level 3, I think Valve may have gone a bit overboard on how defensive an engineer can actually become. Before we talk about engineer on defense, however, I want to take a quick glance and talk about his offensive capabilities. Although not as dangerous as an engineer on defense, a good offense engineer can always be a forward on your side, and not just for the obvious scapegoat of the gunslinger, but other wrenches as well, such as the Eureka Effect or Jag, and shotguns like the Widowmaker or the Frontier Justice. Let's just jump right into this discussion and talk about the mini sentry and the gunslinger. It certainly isn't a powerhouse as people make it out to be, but it is an ungodly, annoying, and tiresome thing to deal with. The mini sentry, although dealing 38% less DPS compared to a level 1 sentry, the mini deals just enough damage to be a problem for players who can't prioritize between the gun and the engineer who placed it, often being killed by either the gun or the engineer while taking out the other one. The knockback on the gun also makes approaching it quite difficult, especially as classes such as soldier, scout, demo, or even pyro. Keep in mind that the mini sentry is also mini meaning it can be hard to spot and even harder to hit if there are multiple people near it. This small size also means that many sentries can be placed in the absolute worst places in the world, and typically get a pick or two on low enemies retreating or unaware of it because you place it in a fucking bush. The final problem with the mini sentry is just how spammable the thing is. Because minis only cost 100 metal, there's nothing that prevents the engineer from placing down another one and forcing you to deal with it as he closes the distance to finish you off with his shotgun. Worst of all is that shotgun just so happens to be the Frontier Justice, as the engineer more than likely has a crit that's going to be planted right between your eyes. He's probably pissed, I would be mad too! I would be mad too, actually! I would be very mad. I would be upset. Death to the bag, exactly! I, I, I don't blame him. Another shotgun that works well with this playstyle is the Widowmaker. As long as you can hit the enemy, you get your ammo back, and for some odd reason, the Widowmaker also has a 10% increased damage if you shoot the same target your sentry is. It's not really that noteworthy, but I gotta bring it up. But what is noteworthy about the Widowmaker is how it further promotes spamming minis due to the metal gained back on hit. The Eureka Effect's unique teleport ability can also be used to ambush enemies and appear in spots they really did not expect you to be. Is that a medic I see? <laughs> oh, get fucked, idiot! Get absolutely fucked, medic. <laughs> or to safely retreat back to spawn. It's a solid get a jail free card. 
Not even close, baby. The Jag, with its faster swing speed and construction rate, can also allow an engineer to push and set up extremely far on the offense. Kinda jarring to go ahead and push the enemy team back just to see a level 3 sentry denying you from doing that, and the other members of the blue team hugging a level 3 dispenser and coming out of the teleporter. If the engineer can also place that sentry in a prime spot, he's essentially capped the point, although this is challenging to do without support from his team. When it does happen, however, it requires an excessive amount of teamwork and coordination to defend both the objective and deal with the engineer, something that is in short supply in most pubs. Which brings us to engineer on defense. The literal backbone of any team. If you don't have an engineer on your team, you can certainly feel the consequence of it more than any other class. No teleporters to get you to the front lines faster, no dispensers to heal you near the front line, and no sentries to help you defend vital areas. Issue is that engineer is such a necessary and required class in pubs that you'll often have numerous people playing as him. And unlike other class stacking strats such as the infamous 9 snipers, the more engineers you have, the stronger that defense becomes. Spies can't sap anything because that will alert one of the nine engineers to his location, and he'll be swarmed upon, with the sapper being removed nearly instantly, and power classes such as Soldier of Demo won't be able to corner peek the sentry without getting hit by either another sentry or a swarm of shotgun pellets. This leaves us with Uber, the most reliable tool to deal with a sentry. Key word there was sentry, as in singular. Dealing with multiple sentries means multiple ubers, which means multiple medics, and multiple power classes to uber, in addition to the proper timing and coordination to have one uber go first and have the second go to actually maximize the amount of damage done, there's an excessive amount of teamwork needed and required to deal with multiple engineers, and like I said before, pubs typically have none of that. Of course, even if you manage to somehow coordinate a team to the same level as a bloody railway station, the engineer still has certain weapons at his disposal to further boost his defense. The most annoying of these being the Pompson. Remember what I said about Uber being the most reliable way to deal with a sentry nest? Getting hit by the Pompson removes 10% of it. Of course, the projectile moves so slow that you'll be hard-pressed to actually ever hit a medic with it, but the ability is there. Also, it can remove a spy's cloak by 20%, also making it useful to deal with that other class that's supposed to counter you. As engineers are forced to repair their sentries with their wrenches, demos or soldiers can hurt the sentry and the engineer at the same time, or a sniper can snipe the engineer if they have the sight line. But, what if you couldn't do that? What if the engineer could repair his buildings from safety without risking himself? And what if he could also pick up those buildings from range if they ever sustain too much damage? The Rescue Ranger, ladies and gentlemen. Although it sacrifices its offensive capabilities, it's perfect for defending your buildings by allowing you to repair them from a distance or move them out of the way if they sustain too much damage, making your sentries a damaged sponge, especially if you combine it with the Wrangler. The Wrangler is very easily one of the best weapons in the game. It technically only has one downside, which is it's only useful if you have a sentry gun active. The upsides of this weapon are extremely powerful. You triple the amount of damage your gun can take, allowing it to tank even more damage, in addition to giving it infinite range, meaning you can take care of those enemies taking pot shots at it from a distance. It also allows you to deal with them faster due to an increased firing rate. For comparison, the amount of damage a normal level 1 sentry can take is 150. With the Wrangler shield on it, however, it's 450. Somehow we went to the health of a medic to the health of an overhealed heavy, and that's just for a level 1 sentry. A level 3 will have a default of 216 health, but while wrangled, will jump all the way up to 648. The downside of having your repairs be 66% less effective while the shield is active doesn't really mean a whole lot if you use this weapon correctly. Swapping to it to deal with threats out of range and quickly switching off it if they get in range, allowing it to shoot on its own and receive full healing. Even if the shield is still up, you're still healing it occasionally faster than the enemy team can out damage it. As a final thing to note, Sentry jumping, very fun to do, 
allows Engineer to build and reach spots that are even more defensible than before. And finally, we have the Short Circuit. It's a fairly weak weapon in Engineer's arsenal, especially if we compare it to the Wrangler's pure defensive capabilities, although it does have a small niche if you aren't playing around your buildings. The orb it fires completely destroys any and all projectiles, shutting down soldiers' rockets or demo's pills and stickies, completely shutting down demo and the soldier if they don't have a shotgun equipped. But there's also another untapped and largely undiscussed usage for this weapon, being how it also stops Crusader crossbow bolts. Having your rockets and pills being disintegrated is one thing, but the healing bolt that was just about to save your life? It makes it hard to form a push without risking your life as a medic if everyone is dying because you can't get a crossbow shot on them. Of course, this is such a situational and niche usage for this item, and really, it isn't all that bad. What is bad, though, is turtling. Remember that callback to how engineers can drag out the match? Turtling is how that happens. TF2 is at its best when both teams are fighting tooth and nail for the objective, pushing back and forth with close calls and plays being made, being steamrolled is boring for both teams, and coming face to face with a wall of sentries is also boring for both teams. It just stalls the game out to the point of, well, there being no point. There are no enemies to fight because you'll be obliterated by sentries and the enemy team doesn't want to push further in case they lose their defense. And it goes back to that whole class stacking thing I mentioned prior, resulting in teams being extremely coordinated to push through. It's both boring to play against and with. To wrap this thing up, Engineer on his own is a perfectly fine class. He's capable of locking down choke points and points and provides a nice challenge and reward if you can defeat him and his sentries, usually open up the way to the cap. Issue is, once you give Engineer a buddy, even more effort is required to probably deal with it. Engineer is both the backbone of his team and the antithesis for the enemy team. Sentries, teleporters, and dispensers all are reliable ways of supporting the team while also requiring the enemy team to band together and be coordinated enough to actually deal with it. Of course, that's easier said than done for both your team to actually destroy the sentry, dispenser, or teleporter. Especially if that engineer is actually seven engineers, and they try to be a bit more defensible through the wrangler or rescue range. Christ, who knew Christ was such a fucking arse? Oh, you know what? At least he sent me somewhere convenient for the plot. Oi, this where they keep the not dying machine? Yeah! Can I go in? Heck no! Well, why not? We only got two speeds fast and faster. Okay, and. Shoot, son, you all as slow as molasses. Get going! Oh, yeah? And what are you going to do if I just walk on in, huh? I see. <laughs> I'll be going then. Howdy there, partner. Get on up. yippee ki yay uh, Remember the Alamo. Woo dog! Alrighty then! Rattlesnakes, howdy y'all. Know where the not dying machine is? To the right! Ah, thanks. Cheers, mate. Ah, thanks. thanks. Cheers, mate. That engineer's a sniper! That's it? This is the not dying machine. I was expecting something a bit more complex. Don't touch that darn thing! Touch. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Not fast enough. Not by damn sight. <laughs> Thank you to Sebastian R for finding Poopy Joe in the last video, and for distracting me from pushing the button. I mean, it was like right there, guy, it was beautiful, it was red, it was the one thing in life that was going to fill me with joy. And you ruined it, you took it away from me, I can't believe you. But maybe you can have the simple joy of being in the next video. Be the first person to locate and timestamp Poopy Joe to go ahead and have your loadout in the next video.